Welcome to the Daily Word, verse by verse. Grab your Bibles and follow along as we study the book of Romans. Keep in mind, I am using the Holman Christian Standard Bible. So if you're using a different translation, the read is different, but the message is the same. Also keep in mind that these Daily Word, verse by verse studies are uploaded to my YouTube channel. BP, the Bible Perspective. That's BP, the Bible Perspective. So like and share these videos and subscribe to BP, the Bible Perspective YouTube channel. Now we're in chapter 14, and Paul started off this thought, though, except those who are weak in the faith. He said that um, there was this division, right, between those who knew, the, we can say, the pure gospel, and they were assured in the, in the, in the gospel, but then there were those who believed that in addition to the gospel, they had to observe days. They had to um, eat certain foods. Now, Paul said that they were weak in their faith. Anything, any doctrine, any commandment, any uh, ritual that you feel that you have to add on to what Jesus has already done on the cross, that makes you weak in the faith. But those who are free... Right, those who know the pure gospel. Paul says, don't boast, don't be arrogant, and don't criticize, and don't put down those that are weak in the faith. Even though he Paul still acknowledged they're weak in the faith. Now Paul also told those that okay, for those of you out that think you need those things, don't criticize your brothers for not doing those things. Because in both cases, you each do those things unto the Lord. Whether you observe a day, you observe it for the Lord. If you don't observe a day to the Lord, you don't observe the day. And then he says, because we're all going to give an account of ourselves to God. We're all going to give an account. So we have no reason to put one another down. So, in verse 13, he says, Therefore, let us no longer criticize one another. Instead, decide never to put a stumbling block or pit pitfall in your brother's way. Now, he's going to talk, kind of come swing back to those who are free. So I'm one of those, I'm free. I know the gospel. I read the Bible. I understand the Bible. And I don't need any props. I don't need to observe. I don't need to go to church. I don't, I don't need to not, not go to church. I don't need to do all of the Christian things that make people feel um, religious or spiritual. Now, at the same time, of course, Paul tells me, don't be arrogant with that. So what does he say? Don't put a stumbling block in your brother's way. Verse 14, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself. Still, to someone who considers a thing to be unclean, to that one it is unclean. Now, we should also understand what Paul is saying, how far we're going to go with this, and I'll get more of that in a moment. In this culture, and many cultures of that day, there was a pagan um, angle to this. So what Paul is referring to is not so much as somebody doesn't like your healthy eating or lack thereof. In other words, you have people who are uh, into health food, so yeah, they're going to criticize you uh, for uh, not eating healthy. That's not what he's talking about. But there were people that um, who came out of a pagan culture, and so the food, you know, and this is where Paul's going to go with this, Let's say you're eating a T-bone steak, and you know that that steak, that meat, was dedicated to a pagan god. Now, here's the person who believes that you shouldn't eat any meat for that reason. But now I'm free. I know it's just a steak. Now, Paul just said right here that nothing is unclean unto himself, but there are people then who hold to that. And the law itself, remember, gave a whole list of what is clean and unclean, animals and insects to eat. But now under Christ, we know we're free. I am free. I can eat some pork. I can eat some grasshoppers. I can eat whatever, right? I'm free. 
in addition to that, there are those then who were bound in pagan worship, pagan ritual. So what do you do about those, right? Those who are bound in pagan ritual and bound in, in, in and they would see that. And keep that in mind. That's what he's referring to now. So if you have a person that's come out of a Jewish background and they see you eating pork, or they see you coming out, of, they see you going to the market and you pick up some meat that's dedicated to this God, it it caused some people to have a stumbling block. And that's what he's referring to here. So verse 15 says, For if your brother is hurt by what you eat, you're no longer walking according to love. Don't do not destroy that one Christ died for by what you eat. Therefore, don't let your good be slandered. Now, see, this is the context that this verse is saying here. So, I mean, this pork chop, right? I got this pork chop, and I know my brother is going to be highly upset over that, right? Whether well, it's my Jewish brother, maybe the same pork chop, right? I said, I got a pork chop. So, on one hand, I got a Jewish brother that he's, he's familiar with the Old Testament law. And then I got another brother who's come out of the temple. He knows, hey, that, that pork chop was dedicated to a pagan god. Either way. He says, don't hurt your brother with that if you think your brother is going to slander. Now, Paul is going to, call it, Paul is going to give us some principles as to where the dividing line comes in there. Because should, if that's the case, how far do I go with the not causing my brother to stumble over anything I do? Right? Because a person may say, well, you're wearing your hair too short. If I think it's too short, is it going to stumble? That's not what Paul is talking. That's not the extreme that he's talking about either. So he says, "Don't let your good be slandered." Verse seventeen: For the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking these rituals, but righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Spirit. What was our righteousness? What is peace and what is joy? All these things. This is what Christ really did for us, and these are the things we should be building our lives upon. Verse eighteen. Whoever serves Christ in this way is acceptable to God and approved by men. Meaning what? What makes for the, the righteousness of God, not the righteousness of men? Or peace, the peace that God has between us, that Jesus Christ provided for us on the cross. And then the joy of the Lord. Verse 19, so then we must pursue what promotes peace and what builds up one another. Right here it becomes, right here becomes the principle. How do I know how far to go? How do I know I may say, look, brother, you got a problem, that's your problem. And I'm serious. How do I know to do that? Now, remember, there are very specific instances where me eating a certain kind of meat could make someone fall. Paul says, take that in consideration. But if that's the case, then just because somebody, doesn't, they don't think that I should drink soda pop, okay, how far do I go with that? Here it is. What promotes peace and what builds up one another. In other words, I'm not going to invite you over to my house if I know that you have a problem with pork. Don't eat pork for the night. That's what he's saying. Verse 20. Do not tear down God's work because of food. In other words, build up that brother. Sometimes you may have to stain while you're feeding that person the word of God until they get free. Everything, everything is clean, but it is wrong for the man to cause stumbling by what he eats. In other words, you force somebody to do that. If you force somebody to, to get all upset over your way. Verse 21. It is a noble thing not to eat meat or drink wine. Think about that. Ooh. Or anything that makes your brother stumble. Now, let me go back to that wine for a moment because today uh, there are a lot of Christians that, don't, uh, that believe you, you shouldn't drink wine. And by the way, I'm not saying that because I drink wine. I have never drunk wine. I have never smoked. So I'm not saying these things because I do these things. But from a purity of the word of God, there's not one single scripture that ever tells a person they can't drink wine. But yet there are Christians that will say it is a sin to drink wine. So if I was to drink wine, I'm not going to invite you over and say, hey, look, you know, let me invite you down to my bar. <laughs> All right. Um, verse 22. Do you have a conviction? Keep it to yourself before God. And the man who does not condemn himself by what he approves is blessed. Now, right there is the principle. 
In other words, do you have a, what, what do you have before God, right? What do you, if you have a conviction before God, let's go back to that wine for a moment. Let's say I did drink wine. Now remember, I don't drink wine. Never have. My entire life, I haven't drunk wine. Mainly because I don't like the taste. I never adapted to the taste. But, but, but guess what? If I did drink wine, so now this would apply to me because how do I administer? Because this is a big issue with a lot of Christians. That's why he's saying that. Now the other issue is, of course, how do we live our lives? And do we live our lives under the scrutiny of everyone's whims? And that's not what he's talking about, of course. What makes for peace and what builds up one another? I know certain people have a tendency to stumble over certain issues. So you know what? Don't do that. If I was go but like this, if you were a woman and you felt the Lord had called you to a Pentecostal holiness churches, don't walk up in there with pants. Plenty of nice skirts. And even if you didn't, wear a skirt. Be stay in fellowship with your brother. That's what he's talking about in the spirit of love. Verse 23. But whoever doubts stands condemned if he eats because... He is eating not from a conviction, and everything that is not from a conviction is sin. Now, of course, some of your old um, your translation says faith. Whoever eats is not in faith. In other words, if, if you're doing something and you know, hey, I don't have a good conviction on this. See, I have a good conviction. Like, for example, if I drunk wine, I, I, look, I can have a whole bottle right here, and it would, I will not be condemned because I've searched the scriptures on certain things. I've searched the scriptures. You know, and that's what he was referring to. I can say before God, this is not wrong. I often say this sometimes that sometimes people are repenting for sins, not from God's sin, but from man's sins. So, um, he's going to continue this as we move over into chapter 15. The same thought, he's going to continue this. All right, so I'll, uh, we'll pick it up in uh, chapter 15 in the next video. I'll see you then.